So today I'm going to show you how to build a pivot table using multiple data sources. A few of them are going to be stored in an external Excel file, some of them are going to be stored in the same file where I'm going to build my pivot table. Let's assume I'm having a bicycle business and I'm selling bicycle parts and I would like to understand my business by analyzing my sales data. But unfortunately my sales data is not the best one and my data includes only the quantity I sold every other information is stored in a separated file. Let's get into it. Whenever you want to connect any table or worksheets, you need to identify your main key record on your data. In my case, it is the product code. And that's the file I'm going to use to build my pivot table. Let's also assume for whatever reason the product cost is stored on a separated sheet, what is also essential to analyze my business. So what I'm going to do first, I'm go back to the PR code sheet where I have all my products listed with the product name. As you see, it's an official Excel table and I just simply select on the table, I go to the ribbon, I select the data tab and I choose from table and range. And now the Excel imported my table into the Power Query Editor. Since I have multiple sources, I need to pull all of them into, into the same environment. So what I do now, I simply just hit close and load, close and load too. I don't want to load my table back to the worksheet, so I simply just select only create connection. And I'm going to do the same for the PR cost table as well. I select the table, data tab from table and range. My tables are named properly, but if you want to rename your table, just simply select and double click and you can modify the table name as you wish. And now I'm going to import the external Excel files that includes the additional information and data I need for my analysis. And instead of closing this window and going back to the Excel user interface, I'm going to just simply right click on the curious area select new query, file, excel and then I can start browse for the folder where I have those data sources. I select the file I want to import and just simply hit import. The navigator pin will show me exactly what objects are stored in my excel file. Since I'm using official excel tables I simply select the table only, hit ok. Here we go, we got our price data. And now I'm going to do the same for each data source. Once I imported all my data sources, then I can start to organize and transform it. First I'm going to select my product tables, right click, select move to group, new group and I'm going to create kind of a folder for each product table and let's name it product data, hit ok and I'm going to do the same for my sales information, move to group, that's going to be a new group, sales data and hit OK. Since my sales information is stored separately by month, I want to create a master file that includes every sales info I want to analyze instead of performing calculations. And in order to do that, I go to the home tab on the ribbon and I select append queries. I click on the arrow and I select append queries as new because I need a separated master file. I got more than two tables, so I select the other option. I'm going to add the February and March table too. I hit OK and the query created me a new query table with the appended sales data. I'm going to rename it as master sales. Hit enter. This time I don't want to use the query functions to merge and link the tables together but an other and more efficient way. So as a last step I should just probably check the format of the tables to make sure that I use the correct data format. But as it seems the query was able to identify the correct data format from the tables so I can simply just go back to the home tab, hit close and load, close and load too. That's the option we need otherwise it would automatically load each individual table back to the Excel graphical interface but that's not what we want we want to include everything in one simple pivot table I could load that data immediately to a pivot table but first we have to link those tables to make sure that the calculations are correct and works dynamically so I simply just select only create connection 
and hit OK. The next feature I'm going to use in Excel is the data modeling function. Exactly the same what you can find in the Power BI, especially because Power BI was developed based on this structure. So for now, I have to just decide which tables I want to load to my data model. And what I need is the product tables and the master sales table this time. In order to load them to the data model, I simply just right click on the table name, I hit load to, select add this to the data model, hit OK. I'm going to do the same for the master sales table, hit load to, select add this to the data model. Once my tables have been loaded to the data model, then I can go back to the data tab and select manage data model. This interface is exactly the same what you can find in the Power BI, but BI has more features nowadays since that was made for advanced analytics. As you see, all my tables have been added, and since I want to analyze my sales data as well, therefore I want to include all the information which is needed to perform calculations. But those are included on separated tables. And remember, this table includes only the product code, but the other tables are related to the product name. So the first thing I need to do is to bring over the product name. And in order to do that, I simply double click on the header of the next new row. And I just simply name it like product underscore name hit enter then I select the formula bar and I can start typing lookup value that is similar to the simple VLOOKUP function in the graphical interface of the Excel so the first column I need to find is the result column the actual column that includes the results I want to get back and that's gonna be the PR code table and the product name that's what I want to see in my column the next one is going to be the search column since I got the product code on my master sales table therefore I, I need to look for the product code on the PR code table. I select the field and the next one is the search value which is going to be the actual product code on my master sales table. So I can either start typing master sales and it will bring me up all the options and I select the product code. I close the brackets, hit enter. Here we go. I got the product names from the original product code table using a simple lookup function. I go back to the master sales tip and I can start creating the next new column and what I need now is the cost each and obviously I'm going to use again the lookup value to bring over the cost each data from the cost table. So the result column name is going to be the cost table, pure cost, and the result is each. The search column is going to be on the same table, right? And I'm going to search based on the product name and the search value is coming from the master sales data and that's gonna be the product name what i just built in the previous lookup value here we go we got the cost each i'm going to just simply repeat the process for the product price as well once i'm done i can double check the format of the columns I'm good with that and from here we can start building our pivot table. I simply go back to the home tab, I select pivot table and just for the sake of the simplicity I'm going to select the first option which says pivot table. It will drive me back to the Excel graphical interface, I'm going to select uh, a new worksheet, hit OK, I move the sheet a little bit to the end, I'm going to name it as Pivot. and on the field section you can exactly see that the power pivot was able to recognize all the tables and data sources in my excel file where you see this little orange icon that shows that these items have been added to the data model the rest are just the simple official excel tables which are already stored in my excel file as a data source so I want to build the sales summary using a pivot table. That's why I pull all the attributes onto the same table. And let's say I want to see a matrix. So let's say I want to see the monthly sales. I'm going to use the product code under the row field and the product name. I want to see a monthly breakdown. So I drag and drop the date column under the columns fields and the power pivot will automatically detect that this is a date format and it will offer me a few options how to display the data. So if I go back to the pivot section, if I click on this plus icon, this will expand me the actual details of the data, but I don't want to see that this way this time. I'm going to just select this field and hit remove field. 
the monthly breakdown is more than enough. And from here, I could pull simply the quantity into the value fields, but what I want to see this time is the actual sales and the margin I was able to make with my business as well as the cost. And if you don't want to perform those calculations in the data model with an additional column on your table, you can create measures in your pivot. You simply select the table where you want to create your measures, right click and hit add measure. This feature is exactly the same what you can use in Power BI. The language is DAX. First, I'm going to just name my measure. Let's name it sales value. I simply click on the formula bar and I can start entering my DAX, which is sum the quantity sold from the master sales sheet times by the average price each from the same sheet. The reason why I'm using the average function to get the product price each in the measure because we tied the price information to each record on our master sales data. Once that's done, I can just simply hit OK and our measure will appear on the field section. I can simply drag and drop under the value section and here we go, it calculates the actual sales value for my business. Now I'm going to repeat the process for the cost calculation. I'm going to say cost value formula bar sum master sales quantity sold times by the average of the cost each from my main sheet. I hit OK. As you see, this has been created as well. Let's create a margin calculation as well. Let's say in dollar volume, so margin USD. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to just simply use the measures I created. Sales value minus the cost value. Here we go. Now I have three different measures created. So if I want to change the value in my pivot, I can do it easily. Let's see what's my margin in the month. But since the current layout is not the best option, I'm going to change the pivot layout a little bit, going back to the ribbon and choosing the design tab. I'm going to remove the subtotals and I'm going to choose a tabular form. I go to the view tab, I remove the grid lines and here we go. Our sales data is pulled into a pivot table using multiple data sources. Since my value is dollar, I'm going to just select one of the field and I go to the value field sections, hit number format and choose accounting. And from there, the dollar sign is the default for me. I simply select, hit OK, and my value is displayed as a USD. Since we have date data in our data model, I can select the field as well, select the pivot table analyzed, and simply hit insert timeline. I can select the date column, hit OK, and now I got a nice slicer, which can help me to better understand the data, slice and dice. If you want to go deeper with your data, like seeing the daily transactions, you just simply select the month filter on the time slicer and you select days and it will go down to the daily basis when the transactions were created. So if I select, let's say January 2nd, and it will show me exactly that I sold only two different products on that day and that was my margin. Now I close the pivot table fields, I clear the filter, it shows me all the data, but if you wish you can even add additional slicers like product code. 